France vows to fight al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb after the group kills one of its nationals taken hostage in the Malian desert. Is this killing a show of force? And how much of a threat is this al-Qaeda-affiliated group becoming? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the programme. I'm Sahil Rahman. A French national held hostage by al-Qaeda's North African wing has been confirmed dead. 78-year-old Michel Germanot was kidnapped in Niger some three months ago by al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb, also known as the AQIM. On Sunday, Al Jazeera aired an audio recording by the AQIM leader saying his group had killed Germanot on Saturday. He said the killing was in response to a French-led rescue attempt last week that left six al-Qaeda fighters dead. French officials convened a crisis meeting on Monday to discuss the matter. Shortly after the meeting, French President Nicolas Sarkozy vowed to avenge the killing. L'assassinat de notre compatriote Michel Germano the assassination of our fellow citizen, Michel Germano, kidnapped in Niger on the 20th of April 2010 by a group of terrorists of Al-Qaeda, Islamic Maghreb, kept hostage, has just been claimed. I condemn this barbarous act, this odious act that has just made an innocent victim. The crime committed against Michel Germano will not remain unpunished. Well, joining me are my guests now in London, Hugh Roberts. He's a specialist on North African affairs and author of the book The Battlefield, Algeria, 1988 to 2002. And in Rabat, Morocco, Mustafa al Khalifi. He's an analyst on Islamic movements at the Mohammed V University. Gentlemen, welcome to Inside Story. Hugh Roberts, can I come to you first? Is that the sort of response you do expect from the French president with regards to this incident? Oh, yes, I think that uh, he was bound to say something of this kind, uh, if only to satisfy internal opinion. Obviously, uh, the death of uh, Mr. Germano uh, is something that uh, the French government is bound to deplore publicly in, in view of the connection with the unsuccessful raid last Thursday. So uh, Mr. President Sarkozy was bound to speak in these terms. Uh, Mr. El Khelfi uh, in Rabat in Morocco, we're going to, of course, detail quite um, carefully the issues around this particular subject. The recent operation that Mr. Roberts has just mentioned um, to attack the AQIM killed six of its operatives, what, last week. And President Sarkozy, uh, it is said, has been warned that he's opened the gates of hell for himself, his people and his country. That's what the AQIM are saying. How worried should French politicians be? Is France now a target for al-Qaeda? Uh, in, in reality, it's, it has been expected that al-Qaeda will turn toward uh, France. And it's an issue because uh, r r during the recent months, many uh, measures, uh, policies that has been flourished within France, targeting uh, Islamic uh, symbols and uh, things like that. The, the problem that Al-Qaeda is trying to, to push France to widen its military presence in the Sahara and to combine its fight against U.S. with the fight against France. There's something that will help Al-Qaeda in the future to encourage and to revive its popularity within uh, Maghreb countries. Uh, and this, in some way, has an impact on Al-Qaeda propaganda by pushing France to be uh, an active actor directly in the fight against terrorism. This thing, I think, f f the French responsible should be careful in their message after what happened last, last weekend, because Otherwise, they, they indirectly, they are contributing in enhancing the popularity of Al-Qaeda in, in, in the Sahel. The, the problem, or in, in, other, in other words, the issue now in North Africa, that we have two main countries. We have Mauritania and we have Mali, two semi-failed states, limited budget in, in military, limited human resources, mm -hmm in fighting terrorism, all these elements will push France to be active 
uh, actor in the fight against terrorism. OK, let, if, this... if I can just stop you there, because we will be coming to that part of the debate just in a little while, because I want to just come back to a point about France's involvement, how careful France has to be, as you say. Hugh Roberts, how yeah. careful does France have to move forward, considering we had a British hostage killed in 2009 and there are still two Spanish hostages held in the area. What France does could have repercussions, certainly for those worried in Madrid, for example. Yes, um, certainly. And there, there's, according to some reports today, uh, the Spanish government was most unhappy about uh, what happened last Thursday when French, as well as Mauritanian forces, uh, made this uh, assault on what uh, on an Al Qaeda camp uh, in Mali. Um, I think that the fact that French forces were themselves involved in that on the ground uh, is a rather controversial aspect of, of the French decision. Uh, it's one thing for France, as the United States, to be providing support to the countries, the armed forces of the countries of the region. It's another thing for their own troops to be in action. Um, so I think that that's, that is a controversial aspect uh, of the position so far as the French are concerned. Mr. El Khelfi, I mean... And, uh, of course, oh. it, it has the effect of making France more of a target. Um, and um, at the same time, the active presence of French, or for that matter, other Western forces on the ground in such circumstances, has the effect of delegitimating the armed forces of the host, uh, the host country and thereby providing some sort of uh, validation or legitimation for the, the rhetoric of Al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb, that yeah. they are fighting, um, they're, they're fighting the West and they're fighting uh, governments that are clients of the West. Mr. al Khafi, can I bring you in on a point that Hugh Roberts just made about how the AQIM may possibly uh, use this incident of an attack uh, in the Maghreb as a way of rallying support. How much of a concern is that? And do they have that much popular support uh, across sub-Saharan Africa? In uh, the problem that Al-Qaeda now in the Sahel is trying to revive its, its weight, its popularity, by using uh, specific uh, attacks, uh, specific uh, operations like what happened this weekend. They, they successfully, they, they succeed in, in adapting themselves with the Western's measures against them. This is an element. The second element, in terms of membership, all analysis and observers said that in terms of numbers that they are limited. But they are so rooted in the region. They have a good relationship with the, uh, with the uh, tribal leaders in, in, in the Sahara. And this helped them in limiting and reminding all Western counterterrorism efforts against them. This is an element that they have so, so they have good connections with the tribal leaders. This is an element. The second element, they are trying to take advantage from the, uh, the, the geography, the, the Sahara, it's 3.5 million squares. It's not like Afghanistan or Iraq. It's so huge. And this gives some, uh, uh, some positive point for Al-Qaeda to, uh, to operate uh, in, in an easy way within the Sahara. A third element, they are, they are using the weaknesses of both Mauritania and, and Mali. They are so weak in terms of military, in terms of uh, the resources, the equipment, all, all of this element. So yeah. in some way, I think that Al-Qaeda in the Sahel succeeded in adopting with the counterterrorism Westerns against them uh, measures. Secondly, developing a policies to undermine these measures mm. and in some way uh, to enhance their propaganda. The problem now for the Western uh, countries and regimes, and even for Algeria and, uh, and other countries in, in the Sahel, how they, how they will succeed in overdrawing this propaganda of Al-Qaeda that will have a positive impact in its popularity. Secondly, how they will succeed in enhancing their intelligence cooperation, mm. their uh, uh, support to local uh, 
uh, regimes that uh, by the end will uh, will give some uh, possibilities to these regimes to limit the threat of Al Qaeda. Well, in other words. No, no, don't mean to interrupt. Yes. just want to just hold that thought while we just give our viewers some background, really, on al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb. Founded in 1990, it began as a group of Algerian Islamists who wanted to replace the Algerian government with Islamic rule. Now, first linked to al-Qaeda in 2006, it is the North African wing of the organization. A small but well-funded army, they survived through millions of dollars collected from ransoms and extortion. The AQIM, as we've mentioned, claimed responsibility for the death of Edwin Dwyer in 2009 after Britain refused to give in to their demands uh, of the killing of Christopher Leggett as well, an American aid worker in Mauritania. They operate largely in the northern coastal areas of Algeria, in Libya, Chad, Niger, Mali, Burkina Faso and Mauritania. The map there spells it out for you. Hugh Roberts. Um, as you've just heard Mr. Al Khelfi talking about the scenarios of how uh, regional governments may have to manoeuvre or work uh, against this particular group, how concerned should countries like Morocco, Algeria, Mauritania and Mali now be? Uh, I think that there is a, a, a tendency to hype the, the degree of threat posed by this organisation. Um, the fact is that it, it doesn't seriously threaten any of the states of the region. It's, it's, it's a problem, it's a running sore, it's a nuisance, um, it's a kind of fact of life almost. It's something that, uh, that has become almost routinized. The idea that it's a serious threat that, that, can is, that is capable of, of genuinely destabilizing or overthrowing any of the states in the region, it seems to me, is, is um, quite wrong, quite mistaken. It's, this is a small outfit. Uh, that uh, is able to survive because it's able to, in a sense, act as a parasite on uh, the other major problem in the, in the Saharan region, which is long-distance smuggling. Uh, and this is also a feature of the group's uh, activity in, in the north, in Algeria. It's long been uh, involved in a kind of nexus with contraband with smuggling uh, illicit ec economic would it and then activities. therefore be correct so would it therefore then be correct mr. Roberts to actually describe them as I've been reading through our research for this program as a, a group of mafia style thugs that are taking advantage of the open space that there is in sub-saharan Africa and taking the al-qaeda name to threaten and scare uh, that would be a rather rather crude way of putting it and not entirely accurate that the the what we now, or what is now calls itself Al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb, is in fact an evolution of an earlier group called the Salafi Group for Preaching and Combat, which uh, had some claim to uh, genuine Islamic, Islamist credentials to, to be in earnest about its doctrine. The point is that the strategy of the GSPC was clearly, I mean, the GSPC was clearly strategically uh, defeated several years ago, and the, what we're seeing is a kind of endless end game where the remains of that group rebranding themselves as Al-Qaeda in order to uh, in increase their, uh, their capacity to recruit impressionable young men. And there's no lack of impressionable young men with no future available to them as potential recruits. Mm. Uh, the point is that all they're trying to do is to stay in business. Uh, in terms, as a jihadi movement with a real ambition to, to overthrow a state or, or seize power somewhere, that, that idea was abandoned years ago as completely unrealizable. So uh, this is a small, low-intensity problem. And what is interesting is the extent to which it is galvanizing high-profile Western involvement. And that's because, uh, not really because of the degree of threat, but because of the competing strategic interests of major p players uh, in this part of the world. And so what we're really looking at is uh, the Sahel region is becoming or has already become a cockpit for uh, power rivalries with this relatively small scale jihadi movement uh, furnishing the pretext for their involvement. Uh, That's Mr. what we're really looking at. Yeah, Mr. Al-Khafi, would you agree with that as well, that now uh, North Africa is, is really an area where 
you might say, superpowers or even certain uh, areas of uh, the world, I mean, maybe America, Russia, whoever you want to describe, are, are, are vying for political influence and power amongst uh, the regimes that uh, are in charge of the North African countries? Yes, in, I, I totally agree because uh, if we look to the, to the policies that has been developed by US, by France, by UK toward this region, we noticed uh, an increasing trend of m the militarization of, the, of this region. The United States has created the AFRICOM as a way to widen uh, its military presence in, the, in, in Africa. This is an element. The second element is to enhance. There is a competition in, in, in the strategic level between US and France in about the Maghreb and North Africa and the Sahel. And this uh, competition, it's not only in the economic level, the oil and, uh, and other stuff, but also in the, in the military level by enhancing your military presence in, in the region. But I didn't agree that it's not real a problem. It's, it's not a problem for Algeria and Morocco, but it's a problem for Mali and, and Mauritania. It's, it's, yes, in some way, it's not a, a problem that could revive real threat that could, by the end, ever draw the regimes. But on the other hand, it's a source of instability. Uh, the Al-Qaeda, in some way, is succeeding in creating a new safe uh, heaven in, in the Sahara. In some way, is representing uh, an element of in the Al-Qaeda propaganda in the world that, that there is a, a force of resistance within the Islamic world against Western influence. So in some way, it's a source of instability. It's, it's a problem. But we can't use it as, as an excuse, like the, uh, what the international actors, France, US, is trying to use it as an excuse to widen its military presence and influence in the region. Hugh Roberts, as Mr. Khalifi just said, that it's a problem for Mauritania and Mali. If we just look at Mauritania, for example, I mean, they 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 have cooperated in whatever way behind the scenes with the French uh, to try and release their national who was killed in this recent operation. But if we just look at Mauritania's position, what sort of difficult position are they in? Even if this group is small, it's certainly grabbing the headlines. It's certainly making people in Mauritania talk not only about the group, but also about the way their government conducts themselves internally and its relationship with former colonial powers like France, with its relationship with the United States, Europe, and, and even uh, uh, Asian countries as well. Yes, um, more, I, I agree with um, uh, what was said a moment ago that, that uh, this is more of a problem for the Sahel states than for the states of the Maghreb to the north. Um, so it is a problem to some extent, a, a factor of instability for Mauritania and for Mali uh, and potentially Niger as well. In Mauritania's case, um, Mauritania has, in a way, all of, the, all of these states are relatively weak. They have large territories which they don't fully control. They don't have the, the resources fully to police and control and, uh, these territories. At the same time, they're relatively weak e economically. And as a result, uh, they tend to be targeted by the more powerful players as potential clients. And in the case of Mauritania, Mauritania has been a, a kind of bone of contention for a long time. Um, uh, between Algeria and Morocco. Both Algeria and Morocco have sought to have uh, the principal in, uh, influence over the Mauritanian government in Nouakchott, and it, it's sort of oscillated back and forth. Uh, at the same time, France has always wanted Mauritania to be primarily uh, through Morocco in the French sphere of influence, not the Algerian sphere of influence. There's always been this kind of subterranean rivalry going on. Um, and I think that in this context, um, the, the problem here uh, internally in Mauritania is that there is, uh, I mean, Mauritania is an Islamic country, there is a largely non-violent but fairly strong Islamic political current of opinion in Mauritania that successive governments haven't really known quite how to handle, haven't been able to incorporate uh, in an institutionalized uh, constitutional way uh, in the way that the Algerians have managed to some extent with the um, Islamic parties in Algeria. 
And that means that, that uh, the presence of, of this jihadi movement, uh, Al-Qaeda, in the region uh, is something that may be causing a particular headache uh, in because of its reverberation mm. or, am or repercussions in, in internal politics in Mauritania. But I actually think that the more important factor in the Mauritanian case is actually the rivalry between, uh, between um, other powers wanting uh, to uh, clientelize Mauritania, to have Mauritania on their team rather than the other team. And I think that in that context, what's significant about what has just happened is the, um, the very uh, public and blatant nature of the French involvement alongside Mauritanian troops. Mm. Uh, and the fact that, let's not forget, that the actual action they engaged in was not inside Mauritania, it was in Mali. Uh, and, the, and Mali has recently been very close to Algiers. Algeria has been providing a good deal of military assistance to Mali, taking Mali to some extent under its wing. Um, and that pr uh, allows us to wonder what was the real object of the exercise of this um, operation last Thursday insofar as it took Mauritanian and French troops into Malian territory. Was this with the Malian government's permission? Was this with the Algerian government's agreement? If not, uh, I mean, whether uh, th that is the salient question to ask about these recent events, because it seems to me that what we are looking at is a great deal of uh, jockeying for position and rivalry between the various forces, all of whom uh, notionally are on the same side yeah, while in there, countering while there are those the regional, terrorism of Acme. Yeah, while there are those regional, you might say, differences and jockeying for position, yeah, Hugh Roberts, I do actually want, want to ask both of you gentlemen, we're coming to very short of time, this one question. We have the AU summit going on at the moment in Kampala. You know, North Africa, maybe the Horn of Africa, has had a short, sharp shock over the World Cup bombings on 11th of July. It does seem, perhaps, with the cooperation between North African states and Europe and the rest of the world, they don't want to see another Afghanistan. They don't want to try and exacerbate the problem in Somalia, but to solve it. Uh, one wonders whether uh, North African countries ha have had their eyes opened over what happened in, in uh, Kampala on the 11th of July and how they're going to react, certainly uh, at the AU summit. Uh, Mr. al khelfi just your thoughts uh, on, on what you expect Morocco uh, to come back with from that summit. I, I think that, that Morocco in, in some way will enhance its uh, cooperation, military, in, in the military level, in intelligence level, in the economic level, with all countries in, in, in the Sahel. Mm -hmm. And by this is trying to present itself as uh, an actor in the fight against terrorism in the Sahel. We should take, take into account two elements that the military budget in both, in, in Mali and, and Mauritania, it's so limited. In Mali, it's only 20 million million dollars in 2008. In Mauritania, it's 150 million dollars. It's human resources that's now, or it's military forces, it's only, in Mauritania, 7,500. 7, so it's so limited, so weak in, in the military level. So now, indirectly, you are seeing mm. Uh, a Very quickly, Algerian I need to get Hugh Roberts' comment on this as well, sir. Yes. Uh, I just need to get your very... Uh, Hugh Roberts, can I just come in? Sorry sorry to interrupt there. We are running out of time. Can I just get your final thoughts on that statement over the whole EU summit and what you think African states uh, will get out of the summit and how they can proceed forward? Well, I, I think that uh, in relation to the problem in the Sahel and the Sahara, I, I simply think that uh, the... Uh, the Algerian government in particular, which is actually the most important of the, of the regional players in this whole drama. And don't forget that Al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb originates from Algeria and is still substantially an Algerian organization. I think the main thing they will want is, is, is the continued backing of the African Union for their position, which resists mm. uh, or, and seeks to limit uh, the presence of Western military uh, tr troops in the region while wanting to maintain cooperation with the w various international partners. It doesn't want uh, um, a, pr a permanent military presence in the region of the kind that has been suggested and that both the French and the Americans have appeared to be interested in.
Right. Well, there for the moment, gentlemen, we have to leave it. And Ms. Alkafi was also nodding in agreement to you in Rabat. Uh, thank you for joining me, sir. And to Hugh Roberts in London yeah. as well. Thanks for your time on this edition of Inside Story. And thank you so much for watching the programme. We do welcome your comments and suggestions. Please do email them to us at insidestory at aljazeera.net. I'm Sahil Rahman. Thanks very much for your time and your company.